Good morning. Thank you for tuning in to the eighth grade math lesson today. Ms. Morrow and I have an exciting and fun activity for you. We are going to be learning about volume. If you didn't have a chance to tune in to the last two weeks, we learned about Pythagorean theorem and distance formula. You can go check it out on Mobile County's Facebook page, or you can also go to YouTube and type in eighth grade math, uh, review those lessons. So this week, we're going to be talking about the volume of a cylinder, a cone, and a sphere. It's the essential concept number two. Today, we're going to focus mainly on a cylinder and a cone. So you may be wondering, what are those two things? A cylinder, here are some examples. A cylinder, maybe you have seen your mom or dad, someone at home have a, a thing of Clorox wipes. That is a popular item right now. Or you've seen some canned goods, a candle, a battery, maybe even you've drank a soda today. These are all examples of cylinders. I have some here as well. We have some big cylinders, some small cylinders, and we're going to have a water experiment in just a second. But before we do that, let's look and see what a cone is. Here are some examples of cones. We have a traffic cone, an ice cream cone, we have a pine cone, we have some seashells, they look like cones, and then we have a party hat. And I also have some examples here of cones. So we're going to look at their characteristics. And before we do that, look at their characteristics, um, well, let's look at their formulas. The volume of a cylinder formula we have, if you look at a cylinder, it has, this is a net of a cylinder, it has circular bases, two circular bases, top and bottom, and it has a height. You can take a ruler, measure its height. We have a measuring tape, if you have one of those out and you're at your house, you can use a measuring tape, or maybe you have a sewing uh, measuring tape where you would measure um, your arms or your legs or if you were measuring to fit yourself. So um, this is the net of a cylinder. The cone net is similar. It has a circular base. Okay, if we open it up, it has little triangles that go along to create its height. Now it's a little, it's a slanted height, but you can also measure it from the top of the apex here down to the bottom of the base. And we're going to see in a second how they connect. So the volume of a cylinder can be calculated by using pi. For this example, and for all the examples that we're going to use today, we're going to say that we're going to approximate pi. The approximation of pi is 3.14. So we're going to just round it to the hundredth there. Um, if you put it into a calculator, you will see a long decimal expansion of pi, but the approximation is 3.14. And then we're going to times that by the radius squared. Our radius, if we look at a circular base, we have diameter is all the way across our circular base. Radius would be half of that. So from the center of our circular base out to the edge is our radius, and there's an example of that there on that picture. And then, of course, our height is how tall the figure is. So we have the radius squared times the height. The radius squared means r times r is the radius times the radius, and volume of a cylinder is always measured in cubic units. Okay, let's review the volume formula for um, a cone, and then we'll do our experiment. The volume of a cone can be calculated by using pi, so there's a connection, they're the same there, times the radius squared, that's the same as the cylinder, times the height, but now we're going to divide by three. In some um, formulas, you'll see that they multiply by one-third, but we know that multiplying by one-third is the same as dividing by three. So if we look over here at our board, you can see the comparison between the volume of a cylinder and the volume of the cone. The numerator of the cone is exactly the same as the volume of a cylinder, but the denominator here on the cone is divided by three. 
So we can make um, we can make a, a, a statement here and say that the cone is a third, the volume of a cone is the third of a cylinder. But there has to be some specifics there. The cone and the cylinder both have to have the same radius and the same height. Okay, so the same diameter, same radius, and the same height. So let's look at some here. How are they connected? We have a cylinder here and we have a cone. We want to test to make sure that they have the same diameter. If I do that, if I put these together at their circular bases and they match, then they have the same diameter. I could also use one of my measuring tools just to be sure though that they have the same diameter. If I put this cone up to this cylinder, what do you notice? Their diameters are not the same. This cone, I'm sorry, this cylinder has a smaller diameter than this cone. Okay. Likewise here, that's too small. The diameter of this cylinder has to match the diameter of the cone for that volume to be a third of it. So you'll want to do an experiment. <laughs> We're going to try not to make a mess here. If we do, we have napkins. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to test this theory. We have, we want to check, so the diameters were the same. I'm getting a little bit ahead. The diameters were the same, so we're good there. Let's check the height. To check the height, I'm going to put them side by side. And I'm going to rest my ruler on top. Okay, and they are the same. They're, that's pretty even. It's level. So it may not look the same at first to your eye, but when you put your ruler on there and they're level, then they are the same height. And again, you could always go by um, putting a ruler there and testing it and seeing the height of that and seeing the height of this one as well. Okay. Here we go. So we're going to say that three of these will fill up this cylinder. Three cones will fill up this cylinder. Okay. Without make, you know what? <laughs> Without making a mess. Can y'all still see that? Hopefully. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We got some blue water. And I did put food dye in this, so don't think this came out of the water fountain. All right, that's about to the top. I'm trying to get it to the top without completely spilling over. Okay. Does that look like it's about a third? Yeah, pretty much. All right, let's, that's one. right to the rim of it. That one's almost to the rim. I'm gonna have to open up my other one. See if we can do this one-handed. If I was back in my classroom, I would definitely have some student helpers here. I know I would, because they love stuff like this. Okay, right to the rim. And pour it in. This one make two-thirds. Oop, a little bit came out. <laughs> this would make two-thirds getting full. All right, here's our last fill of the cone. And it's right to the rim. And it may not be exactly, I'm trying not to make a mess, but it's going to be really close. Oh yeah. So you can see, without me spilling this, you can see how all of this cylinder now is filled with blue water. So three of our cones equals the volume, three of our cones equals the volume of our cylinder. So that proves that a cone of the same diameter and the same height, if they have equal diameters and equal heights, then they will, it will be one third of a cylinder, which is what this proves here. One third of a cone would equal, so three of them would be a cylinder full. You can notice here that these little ones that I have, I have three examples here, and here's a cone, here's a cone, and these are the cylinders. Which one of these would fit? And it's got a little hint for you there since we both have blue on one of them, and it would be this one. This is the only one that has the same diameter and the same height. Okay, and again, you could test it with your ruler just to be sure that it's the same. This one has close to the diameter. It's kind of close, but it's definitely not the same height. And then this one, 
not the same diameter, and close to the height, but definitely not the same diameter. All right, now that we made that connection, let's move our stuff out of our way, make a mess here. And that's how the two formulas are connected. So like we said before, there's some vocabulary. Volume is always, um, well, we represent volume with the capital letter V. Radius is normally a lowercase r, um, and it's half of the diameter like we stated. And then the height is a lowercase h, and then pi, approximately, that's what the squiggly lines mean there. Pi, uh, and it's that symbol, looks like two little lines with a top. And um, it is approximately 3.14. So let's look at an example. Mother's Day is coming up, so Bailey wants to, she's picked out the perfect Mother's Day gift for her mom, but she was, uh, wants to find the volume of the mug before she purchases it. So she knows how much coffee it will hold. Help Bailey find the volume of the mom mug. So we have a mom mug here, we have four inches, and it's all the way across, so is that gonna be our diameter or is that gonna be our radius? That's right, this is our diameter. All the way across is diameter, halfway across is the radius. So we're gonna have to make a connection of that in just a second. And then so it says, um, and then we have our height, in this case is also four here. The height of the mug is four. And then we have pi, which is 3.14. Those are the three things that we need. We need pi, we need radius, and we need height. So we have a diameter. To find the diameter, we would divide it, to find the radius from the diameter, we would divide by 2. So we have 3.14 times 2, because we took half of 4, half of 4 is 2 inches, squared times the 4, which is our height, over here in our volume. Then we have 3.14, we bring it down, we square our um, radius first. When you're looking at order of operations, um, exponents come before multiplication, so we want to square our radius, so our radius would be 2 times 2, which happens to still end up to be 4, um, so it's 4 inches squared, times our height, which is the last 4 inches. Then we bring down our volume, we're now going to multiply our radius times our height, so 4 inches squared times 4 inches is 16 inches cubed. And the reason why it changes from square to cube is because on the radius we have squared units, on the height we have units to the first power, so squared units, units to the first power, so that would be three units, so inches times inches times inches, which is inches cubed. So now we have 3.14 times our 16 inches cubed, which gives us our final volume, and it said to round, well we are rounding here, or maybe we didn't, but the final answer would be 50.24 inches cubed. That's how much volume that this mug can hold. So um, hopefully she did some research to see what, how big of a mug that is there, but definitely she knows the volume of it. Okay, let's look at cone vocabulary. Cone vocabulary, like we said, is very similar to the cylinder vocabulary. We have volume, which is denoted as the V, we have the radius, which is half of the diameter, half of our circular base. We have our height from our apex all the way to the center of our circular base. We have pi, which we are approximating to 3.14. And a cone, we made a little note here, a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder with the same height and the same diameter. We just proved that with our water example a while ago. So let's look at this example. Find the volume of a cone and round it to the nearest hundredth. This looks like a party hat. Maybe you've been to a birthday party and you've seen those little party hats that have the elastic band around it. We're going to find the volume of this uh, party hat. And what do you notice here again in this example? A lot of times, what do they give us? The example gives us the diameter, but we have to find the radius, which would be half of this diameter, half of six, which would give us three. Let's look at what we filled out over here. So in our numerator, we have the same as our cylinder. So we can say like cylinder volume over three, which would be dividing by three. 
So we have 3.14 times our radius here, in this case, half of 6, which would be 3, times our height, which is 9. So we've got to square our radius, we've got to multiply it by our height, and then we've got to divide by 3 as well. So the first step to, on this one would be to square the radius. Squaring the radius would be, say, would be saying 3 times 3. 3 times 3 would give us 9. That's right. So we have 9 inches for our radius squared. Uh, 9 inches squared. We have 9 inches for our height here. And we still have to multiply by pi out there out front. And we still have to divide by 3. So this is, there's several steps, but they're not hard steps. Remember, we need to square our radius first. Then we start multiplying everything, and then the last step is going to be to divide. So we're going to multiply 9 inches squared, our radius squared times our height, which is 9 inches, and that's going to give us 81 inches cubed. 9 times 9, 81, and like I said a while ago, inches and inches, and another inches would be inches cubed. Then we're going to multiply that by pi, the approximation of pi, 3.14, and then divide by 3. When we multiply 81 times 3.14, that's going to get us to 254.34. Hopefully you have a calculator handy. If you have a cell phone that has a calculator or you have um, just a four function or even a scientific calculator, you can put these in. A lot of times, I know for my students, for time's sake, I just let my students, as long as they know the formula and they plug it in correctly, formulas are a lot like ingredients and, and baking and cooking. You have to go by the instructions and you have to put in the right things at the right time and follow the order. And as long as you do that in a calculator, you're going to get the right answer. So make sure you're plugging everything in correctly. Make sure you're pulling the radius from the right spot, the height from the right spot. So when you multiply pi times 81 inches cubed, then you're going to get 254.34 inches cubed. The last step is to divide by 3, okay? You don't have to put the inches cubed into the calculator. In fact, I'm not sure how that would work out for you. I don't think it would work. But plug in the numbers. It will probably give you a syntax error. But plug in the numbers 254.34, divide that by 3. In the calculator, a lot of times it's that little slash, the divide uh, uh, slash, and then you're going to get 84.78. And we always know that volume is in cubic units because there are three um, dimensions here. This is the three, all of these cones, they're three dimensional. We have our radius squared, we have our height. Same thing for our cylinder. We have our radius squared and we have our height. So that's what makes it look three dimensional, okay? So. We proved um, that a third of a cylinder, I'm sorry, a third, a cone is a third of a cylinder. And three of those would give us the volume as long as they have the diameter and the height. So we're going to wrap it up here. Next week we're going to be talking about spheres. This is a hint of a sphere. Um, in today's lesson we learned that you ha how to find the volume of a cylinder, which is right here pi times the radius squared times the height, and we found how to find the volume of a cone, pi times the radius squared times the height divided by three. So those are easy to remember. So once you remember one of them, you know that the cone is just divided by three. And then how the two formulas were connected. That was with our water example. How they're connected if we, and we can look at their similarities even and see how they're connected. So next week, we're going to learn how to find the volume of a sphere. Here's your challenge. Your challenge is to find a sphere somewhere around your house. Here's your little hint. And a measuring tool, whether you bring a um, measuring tape, okay, or a ruler. Maybe you have a ruler. Or maybe you have someone who sews in your family, has a measuring tape like this, fitting tape. Um, around your house for our next week's lesson, which is lesson four. And here's a few hints if you need to, uh, I gave you one here, looks like this. So let's look. 
There's a few hints. I'm eager to see what you guys come up with for uh, how we're going to find the volume of a sphere. We're going to talk about the formula of a sphere. We're going to actually use our tools to measure it. And we're going to calculate the volume of a sphere. And we might have another water example. You'll just have to tune in to see. So I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you are happy and healthy. I hope that you are doing well, whether you're online with your teachers or you're um, using the packets with your teachers um, or you're, and you're tuning on here to find these lessons and, and to calculate our formulas here and to learn mathematics. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Join us next week so we can find the volume of a sphere. See you later.